It's Christmas time. Oh, hello, everybody. It's me, Chris Smith. And guess who I'm here with today? It's none other than Blackie Humphrey, Hector Angel, Shadow Rascal, Godfrey Gladstone the Third. Thank you, Blackie, for that warm greeting. And today we're here reviewing the national tour of Beetlejuice, the musical. Um, the musical, the musical, the musical, I should say. Now, what's crazy is I saw this the day after I got back from West Virginia. On the very last day that it was at the Hollywood Pantages Theater in beautiful Hollywood, California. And look how long ago it was. It was July 30th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Now... You're probably thinking, why on earth did he wait so long? He could have told people to see it sooner. Well, you know, four years ago, on this very day in 2019, I uh, aired my Beetlejuice review, which um, I saw on Broadway, and I showed it on October 18th, I do believe, um, because... It was sort of a spooky show, and I wanted to air it closer to Halloween. And then, as I got closer and closer to the fall, I was like, well, I'm just going to hold my Beetlejuice review until October again, so that people can have a spooky review for the fall season for Halloween. And, you know, Beetlejuice is one of my favorites. I love this show, and... This time was no exception. The national tour, I can tell you, is very well done. The people in the show are wonderful. And this show, <laughs> this show is much more raunchy than I remembered. I watched my old review from four years ago. And I said that you should probably, you know, not bring anyone who's under 13. Which is probably still true because... These kids today, they can handle some four-letter words and a little sexual innuendo from, from Beetlejuice. Um, and now, you know, Beetlejuice was in the news because that Lauren Boebert, that Republican lady, oh, I shouldn't have snarled when I said Republican, I should really snarl when I say Lauren Boebert, went to the show in Denver and... Um, groped her date, and he groped her, and she smoked a little vape, and caused a big scene, and had to be thrown out, and they gave the middle fingers to the theater staff, which, you know, that's terrible theater etiquette to behave that way in the first place. Then she lied about it, and then they showed the cameras inside the theater that, you know, the, like, infrared, and they, you could see everything she was doing. So, there's no line from cameras. But we're not here to talk about politics or bad etiquette in the theater. Just if someone throws you out, don't yell at the poor theater staff and give them the middle finger. It's not their fault. They're just trying to make things good for the other patrons. People are just so awful today in the theater. But those who are good get to get merchandise. Now, here's the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, or Beetlejuice, the musical, the musical, the musical coffee mug that I got. I want to say I ordered it during the pandemic because, as most of you viewers who follow me know, um, which there aren't many, but those who do know that I was very sad during the pandemic, as most of us were, because there was no theater. So I bought some prizes for myself, including this Beetlejuice program, which they still sell. Now, I didn't take a look at the one that was on display at Beetlejuice this time, because, but it has really nice pictures. But because, you know, I was just really after the new poster. The old poster that I showed you the last time looks like this, and so does the magnet which is on my refrigerator. Look at this beetle, how it's raised. I love that. So cute. Um, but, and these are pictures from the Broadway production, not the tour. Um, so you have, 
you have the whole gang from the from the original but just look at these pictures how gorgeous you can just see by the costumes and the lighting I mean how nice and rich everything is day oh day oh it's showtime um Beetlejuice is just so much fun they have all the many different Beetlejuices when he multiplies on the stage. and Yeah. And I just, I love it. Now, a lot of the effects that were in the, um, in the Broadway version were not there. You know, things don't move up on, on um, hydraulic lifts or anything. And the football puppets that were in the original show, like they had... They had um, in the, the on the in the other world, um, what's it called? The underworld? I don't know. Well, anyway, where all the dead people are, the they have the these puppets. It was like one person in a football uniform, and then there were these these others. So whenever he moved, the other football player ghouls moved as well. I don't remember seeing that in the tour. If anybody remembers it, um, and, and I somehow missed it, do tell me below nicely. Um, but so I had to get that when, during the pandemic, I ordered that to make myself feel better. And I ordered the mug, as I told you. And this time, all I bought was the touring poster, which it says, It's Showtime North America. And... Here is the cast that I saw. We had a different deal you the night that I saw it, but you know the understudy was on and she was wonderful. But um, and I think they've changed Barbara's since since uh, this actress played it. But this actress was wonderful. They have the little so this one's a little more a little different than the one I had before, which was just. The black and white, which I think is a very clever poster, but I'm happy to have the characters on one so I can hang that on the wall. And um, then you have the little, the little um, praises from Rolling Stone, a joyful, ebullient uh, antidote to reality. Is that how you say that word? I don't think I've ever used that. Ebullient? Ebullient? I don't know. Um, photo by Matthew Murray, uh, Murphy, I should say, and it's it really captures the cast and the spirit of the show. Now, here is the playbill we got at the Pantages. Um, here is the inside of the program. So, of course, as I told you the last time uh, that I did this uh, review, and it hasn't changed, music and lyrics are by Eddie Perfect, who also did King Kong. Um, book is by Scott Brown and Anthony King, and it's based on the Geffen Company picture with a story by Michael McDowell and Larry Wilson. So, and this is directed by Alex Timbers, choreographed by Connor Gallagher. And the music supervision, orchestrations, and incidental music is by Chris Kukul. Um, here's the cast list. Of course, you won't be able to read all that. What's wonderful is now you can see the insides of, of playbills online. You can find any playbill and look at their, you know, opening night playbill or whatever. Now, Justin Colette is playing Beetlejuice on the tour and he's very good. Isabella Esler is playing Lydia. We had Brittany Coleman and she was wonderful as Barbara and Will Burton was playing um, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Adam and of course Jesse Sharp who's playing um, Lydia's father, Charles, and Delia is played by Kate, K 
Kate Merrily. Forgive us. Forgive me if I mispronounce any names. Here's the rest of the cast. And when I saw it, my understudy for Delia. Hold on. I want to say my understudy was Julianne Godfrey. But oddly enough, I don't have the little white slip that normally falls out. I don't think there was one. But, um, oh, and let me show you this picture I took at the theater. Okay, here's a sign that was out in the lobby when you first walked in. And it says... Important information, please read. Please be advised that this performance, performance utilizes substantial theatrical haze and fog, sudden loud noises, mature subject matter, coarse language, strobe lighting. And I just loved, I loved that they had to tell you that there is mature subject matter and coarse language um, because there really is and here I took this from the stage well I mean I was in my seat that was on the stage but but yes so so Beetlejuice I sat in the balcony the mezzanine if you will in H309 and my ticket was only $44, which I got it at the box office, so I didn't have to pay any any fees. If you can do that, that's the best way, I think. But, um, but yeah, for me, it was, it was even better the second time, because I knew how much I loved it at this point. And this cast, what I was worried about was because... We love the cast so much with Rob McClure, Rob McClure and and Alex Brightman and everybody, um, Sophie Ann Caruso. I mean, everybody in the original cast was marvelous, and the show reopened after the pandemic on Broadway. And um, even though it closed, like I want to say in January of you know after it had opened in the fall, but then it went on tour. So um, it has a cult following, and everybody who saw it, it seemed to, uh, there were people there in, in, um, in costumes. You had people in their Beetlejuice shirts, and, but there were a lot of goth-looking people that went all out, and it was like a big party. I wouldn't be surprised if the Pantages brought this back uh, for another run if they can because they said that it was selling much better than they expected. And this cast was so good, and I know that they've taken good care with all their casting. Now, the show is, um, so whoever you see will probably be top-notch. So the North American tour is continuing. Please do not vape during the show, and please do not grope one another. You can do that in your car afterwards. Now, for the Halloween season, there are three cities that can see it around Halloween. St. Louis, Missouri is where it's playing now through October 22nd. Then off to Tampa, Florida. Forgive me for not typing these up like I normally do. Then to Memphis, Tennessee. Now, in Tampa, it's going to be October 24th through October 29th at the, at the Straws Center. And then Memphis, Tennessee, it starts on October 31st. So you can go to a spooky Halloween performance. And that's through November 5th. Then it's on to Chicago. It's on to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you can go online and just look at the Beetlejuice website. It's on to Huntsville, Alabama. If you want to use it as a Christmas present or early Christmas present, in December it's in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's in Norfolk, Virginia, December 12th through the 17th. 
It's in West Palm Beach, Florida, December 19th through the 24th. How would you like a, a Christmas Eve performance of um, Beetlejuice at the Kravis Center? Um, Charlotte, North Carolina, December 26th through December 31st, makes a great Christmas or New Year's present. That's at Charlotte. Then to Worcester, uh, Massachusetts, Madison, Wisconsin, Cincinnati. These are all in January. Omaha, Nebraska, January 30th through February 4th. And just, you can look at all these online. But Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Dallas, Texas. That's the Texas leg of the tour. Houston, Texas. We're up to March 12th. Ten my, Nashville, Tennessee. For all my Tennessee friends, you can see it March 12th through the 17th of 2024. And then on to Atlanta, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon. Now, I think I'm going to make Marco go down to Costa Mesa with me. Because here it is again in April of 2024 at Costa Mesa, California, April 16th through the 28th at Seagerstrom Hall. Albuquerque, New Mexico, Louisville, Kentucky, for my Kentucky friends. You never see these in West Virginia, it's a shame. Um, Hartford, Connecticut, um, Richmond, Virginia, Knoxville, Tennessee, Schenectady, New York, that's in June of 2024. And then the last one they have listed is Baltimore, Maryland, June 25th through the 30th of 2024. I don't know if more dates will be added, but that's the tour dates that they have so far. So I highly recommend you to go see Beetlejuice, not just for the Hall Halloween season. And you'll be glad you did. And... I'll be back to tell you about more exciting things the next time when it's Christmas time. Happy Halloween season, everyone. <laughs>